Previously on Clone Wars, we found out that cutting Maul in half at the waist turned him into a giant spider. Should have seen that coming. Now back to the story. Savage takes him back to the ship he stole last time and returns to Dathomir, while Maul does the important job of gibbering. Savage finally leaves him there to go find Mother Conehead to see if she can help. Come, let us fix what has been wrong. Follow us, son of Dathomir. Follow me, lost one. Kids come running for the great taste of toxic waste. So he's lured to the altar of Freaky Deaky by the glowing green thing, then gets kind of dazed, allowing her to pluck all his legs off. No problem, he's had a little experience in that area. First step is scooping black clouds out of his head, which I'm guessing is pulling out his madness. Or it could be that his brain doesn't meet emission standards. That would explain why he was left on a junk planet. Then she uses magic to cause the scrap from his spider body to create a new lower half, although this is a kid's show so it doesn't lead to a sex scene using his new equipment. Thank God for that. I'd be nervous considering Maul's head already looks like a novelty condom. I'm not sure what they do with his junk, especially when his junk is made of junk. Oh yeah, sometimes people want me to give a content warning. Content warning. Sometimes I say junk. Well, with that sorted out and Maul conscious enough to grab his brother by the face, she figures her work is done and vanishes in a cloud of green gas, leaving Maul to reflect upon things. Overall, things have sucked. His hatred was enough to keep him alive despite being cut in half at the waist, which is indeed impressive. Now, that's a natural 20 on the saving roll right there. But since then, his life has sucked. Really, come to think of it, everything in his life has sucked, hasn't it? I mean, think about it, the guy trains in secret to become a powerful Sith, fails to kill his first target on the first attempt, second mission, he gets taken out by a Padawan, spends years as a rabid animal while Sidious acquires a new apprentice and went forward with his schemes without Maul. Plus, he left the lights on when he left, so he's way behind in his rent and electric. You know how his credit's going to be in the crapper now. He blames all of this on Obi-Wan, hence the need for revenge. It's not just about besting him and taking his legs. Maul's entire future was taken away from him in that act. And there's only one way for him to get that revenge. Yes, send him a bouquet of everything he's allergic to. At last, revenge is a dish best served with a high pollen count. Actually, they're going to slaughter the people here until the Jedi notice. So after he sends the call, Obi-Wan reluctantly says that he's going to have to go into this trap. And alone, since that was the condition. And Maul seems honorable enough to not slaughter everyone if Obi-Wan follows the rules, right? Yoda backs his play because he's read the script. I mean, because he senses that Obi-Wan won't be fighting this alone anyway. And sure enough, we soon see Asajj Ventress answering the call for a bounty on Savage. So she'll be there too. Just the kind of backup you want. The kind that will stab you there. Obi-Wan arrives to find the city burning and dead in the streets, the handiwork of Maul. When he sees the bad guy, Obi-Wan acts like he's never met him before. One of those, for me, it was Tuesday moments. But actually, this was to get Maul to reveal whether or not he's the real deal. After all, which is more likely, that this is a trick or a lunatic, or that someone cut in half and dropped down a hole is shown up to air his grievances? You cannot imagine the depths I would go to to stay alive, fueled by my singular hatred for you. That may be so, but I defeated you before, and I can defeat you again. If you were half the man I am, you would... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to hit below the belt like... Oh, sorry, I did it again. You are such a dick. I'm just upset because you don't give a crap. Because you have no butt, Yeah, I get it. Well, between Savage and Maul, Obi-Wan is caught off guard and knocked out. A bit quick, too. I don't think that's going to qualify enough for a revenge. It's going to have to probably be the slow roughing up afterwards. <laughs> Hardly fair. Two against one. Well, one and a half against one. I hate you. I hate you so much. Before the ship takes off, Asajj slips on board and taunts the pair of brothers, and they get ready to take her out. So, in the distraction of the moment, she's able to get Obi-Wan up and give him one of her sabers so the odds will be even. So they fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. 
but eventually Obi-Wan and Asajj figure that leaving might be better than trying to win this fight, so they lock themselves in the cockpit and detach it, leaving the cargo hold area adrift, where Maul promises more revenge is to come. But since this is the end of the season, it's just going to have to wait. Overall, the return of Maul is effective. It turns things on their heads a little, but it makes sense. The first thought, if Maul is alive, is that he's likely stranded or locked away, waiting for the chance to be unleashed on the galaxy once again. The idea that he's a semi-feral creature is unexpected, but reasonable and therefore very welcome. It's always good when expectations are subverted without it being subverted in a stupid way. That being said, though, the first episode is ineffective. On the one hand, it covers its runtime quickly, which sounds like a positive, and it is. The problem with it is that little actually happens, and of what does happen, much of it is pointless. The stuff with the diner, for instance, is padding. It has absolutely no bearing on the events whatsoever. Not Savage's journey, not on Anakin and Ahsoka, it's just there. That's not good. I've been trying not to make this comparison, but it keeps coming to mind, so I guess I'm going to make it anyway. The series Better Call Saul frequently has episodes that are like this one. Episodes where the time, it just vanishes. You pause and it feels like you're only about nine or so minutes into it and you discover it's close to halfway done. You figure you're about halfway through it now and discover that you're six minutes from the end of it. It doesn't feel like you've watched that much, but when the episode's done... When you think about it, all the things that have happened, all the stuff that's been put in motion, they come to mind. And you can see that it didn't have a fast pace to it, but it never felt slow. Now, Brothers is kind of like that. It doesn't bog down. The end comes sooner than you expect it would. But unlike that, I look back and I wonder, where was the content? It rushed through, but most of it lacked staying power. Revenge is different. It moves quickly as well, but not in the same way. You feel that there is more going on with it. Revenge gives more of what would be expected by the premise, and is more exciting as well. The main failing of the pair is that it's so focused on the brothers that Obi-Wan's position is downplayed. It's all surface, no delving into it, no conflict over the fact that his master's murderer turned out to have escaped justice nor do we get the sense of the gravity of the situation for him. Obi-Wan's behavior is like he made a mistake once, and it made a mess, and now he's got to go and clean it up. There's no sense that this is in any way personal for him. Likewise, I was disappointed that Asajj was the backup that Yoda meant. The presence of Anakin in the first part made it logical that he'd show up in the second. And while one thing we'd want to see is a Maul-Obi-Wan rematch... We'd also like to see a Maul-Anakin fight, the apprentice of the past versus the apprentice of the future. But instead, all we get for Anakin is his meal comp. The episodes are fine, sure, but they have room for improvement. A lot could have been done to make this a standout part of the series. Your new legs, they make you look taller. 